uh, get your name in it. So that's what I'm going to do for a whole week, is get my name in it. So every time anybody says anything or does anything, or I do or say anything, I'm looking for a chance to say, of course, this is Camilla's restaurant, or of course, you're at Camilla's table, or of course, you know, this is Camilla's world, you know, you're in it, so you don't even have to think. Anything to get my name into that sentence all day long. That's all I'm going to think about. And you know what? You're going to end up on social media all over the place. And never, ever in a bad light. I was telling Ivan that I noticed just yesterday that Danielle is now on Yelp. You know? You're focusing on the end result, which is getting the customer back. Good morning. Hi. Hi, Ms. Yelp. I was just talking about you. <laughs> um, when you're focused on that and not so much um, how much are they going to tip me or what am I saying if, if you're focused on this instead of good morning there was a lot of traffic I don't know That's, I, I just hit it myself then not only are you getting more out of your day, because you're not focused on what, how much are they going to give me? You know, oh, that wasn't enough, or you know, the food is slow, or what? You know, when you're when you're throwing your name into every situation that you can, you're taking so much pressure off of yourself. You have no idea. Customers have a really hard time picking a fight or finding fault with anything that you do because they know your name. It's it's psychological. John will tell you this in a couple of years. <laughs> um, so we're going to use everything that we can to get everything that we can out of everything that we can. What we have right now is Ivan's Restaurant. It's a gold mine. If I had a glass of water, I'd fill it right now halfway. And I would say to you, is this halfway full or halfway empty? And you'd think that there was a right answer, but both answers are true, right? Both answers. So you can look at this restaurant business as a food business that you're working in, or you can look at this as a people business that you're taking more from. Now, Ivan knows that every single one of his customers goes to psychiatrists, bands, they buy books, they buy movies, they go to movies, they go to plays. He knows this. But all he's ever said to you, and this is what you're going to say to your employees, is this is how I would like you to do my business, right? But in actuality, the more you do your business within Ivan's business, the more everybody benefits, right? So he's a small business owner. What are you? If he's a small business owner, what are you in this business? Uh, I believe we're small business owners. Thank you. You're both running a small business. That's brilliant. Do you know how many people have ever answered that? Not. <laughs> Not. Because everyone has this idea, we've all been trained in this restaurant business that we work for somebody. We work in this food industry. We don't. We're working for ourselves. We just happen to have all of the amenities paid for. I mean, when you get out there and start your own business, you're going to know how much each chair costs. And you're going to say, oh my god, that was amazing. What Ivan did was amazing. You're a small business owner. He's a small business owner. Who makes the first dollar when you get somebody into each chair? Therefore, this is, what did the model bus just pull up? Like, what's going on here? You, you know, you start to take control right away. I'm not saying, what do you want? I don't care what you want. I care that you leave here singing my praises and you come here, you, you leave here wanting to come back. And how do you do that? Well, you guys have the best menu on the block. You have the best menu going. You believe that, right? All right. You also have the least expensive
adjusted prices for any food industry, right? So it doesn't matter what, whether you, when, when you say get the most expensive item, it's still the least expensive item in the big picture when people are going to dinner and eating $30 steak, yeah. $50 steaks now, yeah. right? So this is, this is amazing, these prices. So when you get a customer who says, we're celebrating life, oh my God, I'm going to help you celebrate that. You think you're celebrating life now? You're in Danielle's station. <laughs> you know, you just scratched the surface. So you start with these blocks. On the bottom, you take your blocks and you start thinking, how am I going to get my whatever? So right now I'm focused on getting my name in it. I'm going to do that every single second, every single minute, every place that I am in this city, in and out of this restaurant, to make sure that everybody knows who I am. You know what that's going to do at the end of my my week, my month, my year, I'm going to have so many clients for my future business. I may not even know what that business is, but we're going to get up to here. You may not ever even get to any of these other blocks. If you're just focused on one and it works for you, you may just use that one block to keep opening doors, opening conversations, opening up to the point where you're getting up to like, what's the, what's the top, the, the block right under the very top one? Who, who wants to read that one? Alejandro, let's read the, the block right under the, the top one. It says special orders. The top. At the top, the, uh, the second one. Uh, special orders for the setups. Okay, because you know my name. want to get. Like, how would I, if I was a customer, how would I know that I can, I can order ahead? How do I know that I can text you ahead? Well, you build a relationship and it starts from here. <clears throat> if you're not using information like why they're dining with you, an anniversary, celebrating life, a work, you know, we're all getting together from work. If you're not using that information, you can't get any higher. So everything that somebody says to you, very important. Beyond getting your name into it, you're also trying to get information too. The more information that you get, the more power you have. That's what we're looking for from any job. But in specific, a job that deals with people? Are you kidding me? That is the ultimate power. You have all the power. You're the professional, and you have people coming in asking for what you offer. Sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Plus, you're walking away after you know getting that relationship built. You're walking away with them as a contact for life. That's amazing. That is invaluable. So not only are they leaving this 20% tip, they're also funding your future, your children's future. So each and every person that walks in here is pretty important, right? And yet we walk. We stand there in an empty restaurant watching them walk by, maybe with bags, um, we don't pull out their chair. Every time that somebody goes to sit down, everyone should go and run and pull out their chair. They should be like, what the hell? This is amazing. Am I in a five-star hotel? They should feel that. Because A, it's harder to have a problem with the food coming out, the timing. It's harder to taste something that's not perfect because they're feeling already like they're having this five-star experience. All you're doing is making sure that your kids go to college. They don't know that. They feel like, oh my God, this is amazing. You are building a relationship. That's the beginning. Every time you get a chance to put your name into something or, or assist by pulling out a chair, helping off or on with a coat, not standing. I think I said this last week. People, like, it's it's psychological to not want to do anything. Danielle, we talked about this after, that she felt weird 
saying, well, you know, I've worked in a higher end restaurant and the things that should be going on are this, but everyone around her is doing this or nothing. So she's uncomfortable going out on a lip. You're going to be uncomfortable when you see so many start to take their coat off. If you're going to look around and everyone's going to be doing the same thing, they're all going to be looking like, should I? I don't know. Should I? I don't know. Would you? I don't know. And you're going to be communicating from across the room. Someone is going to walk over and go, let me help you with that. And when they take that, when you physically touch somebody, which is awkward the first time, because you don't know how they're going to react. That's the only thing that you're afraid of. You don't know how they're going to react. Well, you're the master of ceremonies, and you're the professional in this restaurant. You're going to get a great reaction, trust me. And when you go to take their coat off, and they say, oh, well, thank you. This is unexpected. That's when you throw your name in it. You're in Camilla's restaurant. Don't you worry about a thing. I've got it all taken care of. You have just put so much more power in your court and less in theirs. They don't want it. You think that they want the, all of this power. You think that they come in here thinking, I'm going to order this, I'm going to order that, and I'm going to want it at this time. They don't. They don't. They're here because they don't want to think. They want to be fed. They want to be nourished. They don't want to think. So take that power. Take that power and then amp it up by putting your name in everything, assisting them with things that they were not expecting, and walk away with a client list for your future. Does that sound good? All right, let's talk about the, the menu that you're working with. Like, all right, let's talk about, I'll get back to the hospitality tips for better thanks triangle um, I have I'm gonna send you guys a link to uh, I'll, I'll, I'm recording this you don't have to remember you don't have to take notes you know you'll, you'll be able to come back to this I'll even send you a link so that you can print this out too so you don't have to worry but we'll come back to this and see how how easy it is to do each and every one of these things and how you could actually do three of them in like one night. But that's a lot and you'll see, oh my God, I wasn't doing anything for myself. I was doing everything for, not even for Ivan, you were doing everything for this restaurant industry that doesn't really give you back because you've been trained by people who don't want to be this invested. They don't see it as a people business. They don't see it as um, something that feeds them and, and, and produces their future. You know, a lot of people have been trained by really, really bad examples who, don't, who, who shouldn't be in the business. So you're going to start taking all of these and start really empowering yourself, taking all the power by creating moments that get your name in it, um, unexpected situations where you're taking clothes off, pulling chairs out, grabbing bags, opening doors. It's a full-time job before they even get to the table. Before they even get to the table, you should be working on getting them to the point where you're giving them the text number. Now, at some point in the next week, I want you to all go to Google. Google Voice has a free text number. So you sign up for that so that nobody has your personal text number. Um, but you can re you actually uh, refer it to your phone so that when somebody sends you a text saying, I need, you know, flowers on the table, I need all the appetizers on the table, we'll be there in 15 minutes. You can do it because you're the guy inside. You're their personal. You're now their personal concierge. You know how much people tip for that? That's insane. That's an insane amount of money that people just let walk out the door because I don't know you because I'm not giving you the opportunity to start thinking that this is a possibility. So let's let's look at the menu real quick because some of these things are amazing 
opportunities to get that conversation started. <clears throat> Us to each of us to grab menu yeah, let's grab, let, let's grab at least, no, I have more. What is this? That was the menu. See, I didn't even know what sushi, the, I didn't even know what Mexican sushi was. Mexican <laughs> sushi basically is like a Japanese infusion and it's all cooked. Yeah, it's all cooked. You know how I mean, you know how many people I know that don't eat raw anything? Mm -hmm. And even has like a chicken breast wrap. That's, oh, it's amazing. I have, I know so many people who are totally freaked out by sushi, but don't have never even heard of Mexican sushi. I thought that it's Mexican sushi. That it's like it's just it's in a Mexican Mexican restaurant. It's sushi, but it's you know it's all raw fish. It's all done the same way, but it's just done here. And I think a lot of people think that. Okay, that's that's really interesting. It, it is really. And that some of the flavor pairings are amazing. So when you walk up to a, a table and you have so many opportunities to build that check, some of these flavor profiles are the key to what you need to start that conversation going. Have you ever heard of Mexican sushi? I mean, that's a question. A lot of, I mean, when when you work at a steak restaurant, isn't it hard for people to walk up? If you're a professional, isn't it hard to walk up to a table and say, have you ever heard of steak? No. What? <laughs> it's a steak restaurant. You know, you have so many opportunities on your menu to talk about so many different things that people don't know about. And you have a chef, like, will, I think we asked you this before, will the chef come out if it's not too busy? We did already on the green this week. You did? Yeah. A lot of things that you have on this triangle, it's so surprising that we did it already, right? It was like automatically organic. We were getting it, like for example, the first one, we did a working with the hostess. That was the first thing that we did last Friday. Okay. Not last Friday, like two weeks ago, when we have the first session meeting with you. So we were working with the uh, hostess to get the names of the customers and actually greetings and everything. I think you actually can see the difference, like everyone saw the difference between that day and the rest of the day. So it's like you say, you realize that you were not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? When you're trained by people who are unhappy, it's amazing how you, you realize all I was doing was bringing food out. All I was doing was coming over and saying, what do you want? And I was only taking a home between 10 and 20 percent. But when you're trained by somebody who says, look, the glass is half full. This is not the food business. This is the people business. You realize, oh my God, all around me is possibilities to do so much more and create so much more for me. And everyone kind of thinks, but this is Ivan's restaurant. Ivan wants that for you. He wants you to have these relationships forever. Why? Because it's, you can't have that relationship without building it here. Building that relationship here means more, more money, more foot traffic, more promoting that he doesn't have to do. So of course he wants you to build these relationships. He wa Does anyone have kids? I asked this last, last time and no one has kids. Nobody. Okay. Oh, no. It's so it's, it's such a huge motivator. Don't you? I mean, it's one thing to say, I'm going to finish school, or I'm saving for a class, or I'm saving for an apartment, but those are so ethereal. When you're talking about your kids and what they need and what they want, and, but really, what you want is more time with them. You know, it goes like that. Mine is 21 now. You know, I remember when she was one. It's, it's like, oh my God, how did that happen? And I spent a lot of time with her. So I can't even imagine being in a cubicle, working, you know, and probably working overtime and not being able to get back to my kids. You guys work in the restaurant business. You have flexible schedules. 
you can work five days and take, or even four days, or do doubles and work three days and have time with your kids. The more things that you do to empower yourself and save yourself time and energy means more time and energy with your kids. It's huge. Once you start building a family, the restaurant business is amazing for you because everyone walking in is a possibility to save you time and energy. And if that doesn't motivate you, I don't know what else does. When you're pulling out chairs and, and taking coats off of people and saying, I'm, I don't know if you met last I'm Mia. I'm Anna. Anna, nice to meet you. I'm sorry, it was No, no, that's okay. Um, when you're saying, are you kidding? You're in Anna's world now. You don't have to think about a thing. You know, getting your name on it is ten times more important than, than somebody who's, I don't know, I'm just working. I don't know. Maybe I'll figure it out someday. Which is something, you know, that's fine for them. But it's ten times more important for you. It's ten times more important for you to pull out a chair and say, and when they say, oh, thank you, thank you. And that's one thing, when, when I have the thank you down on the bottom, all right, when I say, um, this is totally off topic, but it's really, really important, and it's one of those things that will help you get your name into it. Um, when you offered me coffee, Camilla, and I said, oh, um, all right, so let's say that, that you made it for me, you handed it to me, and I say, thank you. Oh, no, when I all right, you handed it to me. Go ahead. Uh, do you want some coffee? Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now you do it. Alejandro. It's actually great. Yeah. <laughs> Alejandro, you just handed me coffee. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I just accepted a delivery. Oh, thank you.
say, uh, say a bunch of people were here last night, four people, um, what would the average check For four people? Yeah. It depends, in the happy hour time or just regular time? Like a regular dinner time. Four people between different and like around 70 something? Four people? Five. Oh. Well, it depends on the drink. Yeah, yeah. Do we go over a hundred? Uh, that's what it's called, a pitcher, right? Yeah. When I see on the prices it says 12 or yeah. 38. Yeah. It's a pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. All right. That would be something fun for, a, you know, an office. So how many times do you recommend a pitcher? Well, we see large groups like those, like more than three. We recommend that. When they are really the same mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're different for their own. Yeah, but they don't like the same thing, like two margaritas, four margaritas, where you just go ahead and say, like, why don't you get a picture? Or you're going to get more. Okay. <laughs> <Like that's right. laughs> Who did the sales training for your staff? Do you do sales training? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What? And, and yeah, no, actually, yeah, my, my, my other partner, my brother, yeah. like, did sales. Did you get first thing? Yeah. Yeah. The first meeting, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. we, I was in the first meeting. <laughs> and you're saying, you're saying the first meeting, and when was that? Well, that was, that was, <laughs> it was, last year. Last year. Last year. This time last year. February? Okay. This time last year. February, yeah. So, and when you get together for your meetings, what do you generally talk about? Just catching up, new specials, do you have specials? I do have a special every day, daily specials, but we talk about customer service, catching up, maybe we have a mistake in the week, how do we can solve it, okay. what do we do wrong, um, how do, like, we, have, we always talk about like, you know, customer service, but more the uh, classic way. Okay. We have yeah, like, no hope on it. Okay. Um, but so. actually, they need a minute of the talk about sales. And how does that usually flow? How does that conversation usually go? Yeah. How is sell more? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the customer service sales. Yeah, customer service to sales. How okay, and. and Okay, so someone's already talking about that. Yeah. And how does that make you feel when you're talking about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more in that level. It's like, you, you hear what they're saying. But, but it's always from their perspective. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so a table of four could be up to $100 on the average. Um, especially when the, you don't know what their what the agenda is, you know, why are you here, you're just, you're walking over to the table and you say, what can I interest you in, you know, give me a, an average sales pitch, Danielle, like how would you create a table for a four? Um, well, I say, welcome to the Pancho, my name is Danielle, I'll be your server tonight, have you ever been here before? Uh, they say no, so I'll go ahead and explain all the menu, like, I must go over, this is our like, expensive drink right now. And it's uh, just the grass for one person. So if you have two of those, it will be, you know, a good job. Just two of those for one person. Um, so I'll go ahead and explain how many places we have it in. Um, we, I explain the specials, the signature dishes from the house. And then I, I said, okay, I'll let you think about it. And I'll, I'll leave. And then I'll come back and ask you any questions. So people start thinking about what I just made. Okay, I like it. And and it sounds a lot like what they're expecting and what a lot of other restaurants do. Mm -hmm. So, with that in mind, you're probably going to expect what a lot of other service industries, a lot of other um, restaurant employees get, including bad reviews, finger snapping, and possibly an average tip. Mm -hmm. So, in order to change that dynamic, what do we have to change? That's what I'm thinking about constantly. And 
one of the things that I came up with was, while we were talking, was when you said celebrating life, how do we get people to say that? You know, if you're here because you're like, Ugh, just, you know, I don't want to think, I hate my husband, my job sucks, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> how do I get a party of four, or even two, or even one, to say, celebrating life? How do I do that? Johara? Special occasion, celebrating something tonight. Okay. Or asking them that gives them the opportunity to say no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes they say no. Well, celebrating life. That's you know the thing that. How do we make sure that they say it though? Right. Don't give them a yes or no mm-hmm. question. Say, what are we celebrating? Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks for coming. I mean, look at this place. This looks like a party waiting to happen. It really does. Somebody took a lot of time picking out a lot of things to make sure that people feel good in here. So when I walk up to a table, if I want to get that response, I'm thinking, what am I going to say? What I came up with, and you guys can tell me you know, what you usually say, but what I came up with was, thanks for coming in, what are we celebrating today? What are we celebrating? You guys look like a, a model bus just pulled up, you know? What did the good looking factory just, you know, pop it? Whatever you need to say to get them feeling good and then say, what are we celebrating today? I want to know. You guys look like, you know, this is going to be an amazing night. Get them thinking, well, sh- I do have a lot to celebrate. You know, I'm above ground. A lot of things are happening elsewhere in the world. People are really thankful. Focus in on that and say, what are we celebrating today? And then launch into, you know, what you want them to experience, which is not a burrito. You want them to have the most expensive things on the menu. Can I pass this down? Um, and who has their phone out right now? No one. Not a bad thing. All right here, right here. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, let's actually, and if you want to pass it around and then pass it back, just take a glance at it. Okay. Um, everybody, and then Anna, when you pa- when you get it back, if you can count, just total up everything. It's basically a better check than walking over and saying, "What would you like?" <laughs> and that's I just went to your website and I I just copied and pasted a lot of the things that were on there, um, but started off like with an appetizer, um, with drinks. I, I think I did the picture. Uh, you have the most expensive dishes right there, right? I didn't do all the. I, I took a, um, an enchilada as well, but I did. Uh, I did um, the grilled steak, the sautéed. Uh, the fajita, um, and then the salmon, and then um, an enchilada for the main course. So you know, a good like possibility. Yeah, yeah. it's actually pretty good. Yeah. The only thing that might be a, ske- uh, a little skewed is I chose the word uh, brandies at the end. I don't even know if you have after dinner drinks. Do you have that? I don't. Okay, but so I mean, I, I do. We do have coffee on there, but we don't have any like yeah, after dinner drink. No. Like a like, 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 like a wine or something like that. Not like like a yeast drink. Like a like or even a French yellow go. No. Yeah. 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 Sometimes people ask for coffee and a shot or something. Sambuca, okay. Alright, so, or, 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 okay. or, 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 so instead of the brandies. Huh? Okay. Apro. Is that an apple base? Yes. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. One thing that's going on right now in the world of food is people are getting a lot of information. And so a lot of people are using or accustomed to hearing words like digestive, or pairing, or um, what are some of the other words that people would use? Chef. Um, people are, yes, chef. You know, have you ever watched the Iron Chef, or what's his face? Gordon Ramsay, where people, you know, like pots are flying, and if you don't say yes, chef, and get down on your knees, you, you know, you're out of there. Um, <laughs> So people are watching this as entertainment, but guess what? Just like our thank yous, thank you, thank you, thank you, no, thank you, it's awkward, but 
people are hearing over and over and over some of these words that are sinking in. So you as the professional can start using So instead of the brandies, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Apple. Is that an apple base? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Apple base, yes. Beautiful. One thing that's going on right now in the world of food is people are getting a lot of information. And so a lot of people are using or accustomed to hearing words like digestive or pairing or um, what are some of the other words that people would use? Chef. Um, People are, yes, chef, you know, have you ever watched the Iron Chef or, what's his face, Gordon Ramsay, where people, you know, like pots are flying, and if you don't say yes, chef, and get down on your knees, you, you know, you're out of there. Um, <laughs> so people are watching this as entertainment, but guess what? Just like our thank yous, thank you, thank you, thank you, no, thank you, it's awkward. But people are hearing over and over and over some of these words that are sinking in. So you as the professional can start using words like pairing, digestive, um, digestive, uh, like flavor profile. That's a huge word. And you know what that makes you sound like? A professional. Guess what you are anyway? A professional. You know everything about that kitchen. Everything. And if you don't, you should. You should know exactly how these things are made, exactly how long things are roasted or marinated or sautéed. You should know what's house-made and what's not, where the butter comes from. Is it salted? Is it unsalted? I mean, it's not just a matter of nuts, you know, or, or gluten or not. It's a matter of being a professional. Guess how much more money doctors make than, than your mom telling people that they should use salt water gargle to fix their, their sore throat. Doctors make a whole lot more, right? People trust doctors. Guess what? When people come here, they trust you. They know that you know a chef. So your specials are much more expensive or about the same? Actually, the specials are like... Um, an average price. They're not like more more expensive. Brilliant. And how are your specials special? Are they bought for that particular for the, the two or three days, or is it something that's moved into okay, let's let's get this, let's make something new? No, we got a menu, for fixed menu with daily specials. And that's. I don't. I, I'm sorry. Like, like, uh, you get like an appetizer. Like one of them is like you get an appetizer, uh, entree, and a main and a dessert for like certain like price. Okay. So like if, right. if it's Friday, you can get that uh, like a combo. It, it depends the on the day. We yeah. got yeah. daily yeah. yeah. specials. So the Thursday is a, it's a different uh, special. Okay, but is that a special it's not like a, like dish? A, like, a, like a meal. No, like oh no, 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 no. We're talking about like a special combo. No, we don't have a special dish. Like. Start to recommend the front of the chair. Yeah. No, yeah. We don't. Okay. Perfect. All right. So did everybody get a chance to look at the at the better? Okay. While you're looking at that, I will tell. Oh, thank yeah. you. Okay. Okay. I actually don't even need Anna to add this up because I want you to get it, all right? That menu that you're looking at that is pretty much average, you know, appetizer. I even put in, um, I think I only put in two inexpensive appetizers on it, right? Um, chimichangas. Yeah, for four people because you can use that as, like, pulling back, like I'm not recommending the most expensive thing, and because I'm only ordering two, but there's two on each, I'm saying, you know, don't fill up, because what's coming is amazing, and I don't want you to fill up, you know, trust me, everything that you're going to see tonight, we can pack it up and you can have lunch tomorrow, but I don't want you to fill up so much that you can't enjoy your dinner. 
people are so used to appetizers, entrees, dessert, coffee, and dessert. right, or the drink, or the, and you know, at finer dining establishment, yeah, it's right. all of the above, right? So you want to get all, you want to get your check average up, not for Ivan, for you, because that table that I just gave you is two hundred and forty-eight dollars and twenty-five cents. For four? For four people. And the only thing that's different is that I use the word brandy instead of sambuca. Okay? If I'm coming in here with three other people and I'm entertaining and I'm looking to you to, to run a show, you better believe I'm ready to pay this. Because this is half of what everyone else is going to charge me, and I know that. And it's also nothing, I don't have to think about anything. This is all taken care of. Because why? Because I, I said we're celebrating life. Because you said, well then let me take care of everything and take it to the next level. Honey, if you think you're celebrating life now, wait till you walk out of here. Because you are going to be saying, Danielle, thank you so much. You're going to be calling me tomorrow saying thank you so much. That's how good it is here. And believe it. Because that's what people want to hear. They don't know. It's overwhelming. Look at your menu. There are so many choices. You know, when we when we go to the dinner table at mom's, how many choices do we have? One. And if you don't like it, you're not <laughs> you're you're not eating tonight. You know, that's over and over and over and over and over again. When you get, I mean, it's the same thing as thank you. It's hard to get out of that. When you come to a restaurant, what you're experiencing is choice overload. You have one person between you and the chef who can broker the deal, you know, and knows exactly what what I should be having, and that's you. So use that power to put all of this in your pocket. All right, so $248.25 for a party of four, which... Okay, we'll do the numbers first. So a party of two is only 100, it's, it's basically $124.12. A party of six, that's you guys right now, that, that setup, $744.75. How'd you like to make 20% of that? Okay? Now a party of eight, $992.50. Do you really want to work? and wait on tables of two, right? So everyone that you're talking to outside of this restaurant, you're saying, send them in, ask for Camilla. I am party central. Trust me, when it comes to birthday parties, I am, the, I am your girl. Because I would rather wait on eight people four times a night than ten parties of two that you're never going to have time to figure out who they are when they're going like this because you're in between. So try to stack your odds by packing this place within, with larger parties for you, not for Ivan. It's the same for him either way, right? You will end up making so much more money on that check. So if you do, let's see, if you do two tables, of, all right, here's the big picture. A table of four, if we have five of them, and then we do uh, four two tops, and then we do four six tops, which is one, two, three, I thought we had four, um, and then two eight tops. We could definitely, back there. yeah, I figured all of that into one seating. So one seating would be six thousand dollars, seven hundred and two, right? Six. $1,702. In one seating. In one seating. In one seating. I'm not even counting with the uh, patio. No. 20% of that is one is $1,300. $1,340. Okay? One seating. Guess how many seats you can get out of this regular dining area, regular dining hours? Four? You could do four. Once you start making sure that you're... <laughs> 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 
for that. <laughs> it's amazing when you're on the subway not accidentally dropping things so that you can hand over business cards and menus. You're sitting next to a thousand people who could be having their birthday party with you and giving you $1,300. That's your, your commute here today. It wasn't mine. I sent people here. I'm not making any money from your tables. My rent is paid. My kids are done. She's on her own now. <laughs> My classes, I don't have to worry about. You guys, when I said at the beginning, there's a stack of hundreds on that table, it's still there. Not one of you has reached in to put any money in your pocket. Pretty cool, right? Starting today, you could have the world. Williamsburg, I said this last time, Williamsburg will be yours. You, everyone will know who you are. Trust that. All right, so in, in four seatings, right, that's, if you do the math and multiply by 60 and then divide four times, that's 105 minutes per seat. 105 minutes. You can do a lot. You've got it. You, that means you have to control this situation. You can't walk up and say, what would you like tonight? I don't care what you want. I care what I want. I care about what... I care that you're going to walk out of here needing to come back. And the way that we do all of that is we become the master of ceremonies. We are the professional. We start by pulling off their coats, pulling out their chair, and controlling the timing. You use your bussers to make sure that everything is running. You know, you, Baba, you know, you keep things flowing. And when you have those empanadas still on the table, but the food is coming out, you start talking to them about their lunch tomorrow and start, start saying, can we wrap this up so that you've got some snacks for tomorrow? You know, you control the timing on that table so that you're, you know, you're giving that, you're still giving it. Don't take away, right? Because you may have food coming out, but you're packing up and you're giving, giving, giving. So you're going to run that whole table, that whole show, eight people in one hour and five minutes. By the, you know, the minute that they start walking in, you should be figuring out how to, how to focus on getting them to, to their after dinner drink, their Sambuca. Can I get you anything else? That's what we should be thinking about. And that's what they want too, honestly. And the only way to do that is to know what the hell is going on, what they're, celebrate, what they're celebrating, how to get food, the food that they want onto the table, and what's going on in the neighborhood outside of this afterwards. Right? You can't get them out if, they're, if there's nowhere to go. And they're still going to... If you don't know what's going on in your neighborhood, and you can't tell them what else is going on, and you can't hook them up and be that man on the inside... You know, use my name. Remember we said this over and over and over again last week. Use my name. You are totally at the front of the line. There are clubs around here, yeah? Oof. Right. Huge. And you've got a young audience, especially the people that are dining late. Later people that, you know, you're getting people to come in here. You've got to check this out. We're so awesome at, you know, 9 o'clock. Um, that's the time to start using your contacts and using your hostess to say, you know, can you call up such and such club and say that Johanna, is, well, she might be actually making the call, that um, Camilla is, is sending people over, you know, um, when you get back to the table. Listen, I just, you know, I heard you guys saying earlier that you wanted, you were looking for something to do, you wanted to go out dancing, and took the liberty, you know, it's a professional... A uh, professional hazard is uh, doing this eavesdropping thing, and I, I took the liberty of making a phone call. Just in case you want, I have down at the other end of the block a place that is expecting you. It's a great club, great, you know, vibe, whatever. Just mention my name, and you're in. You're at the front of the line. What? You know, that's amazing for anybody, but it's also getting them to think added value service, I'm, de I'm definitely tipping you more, but I'm also thinking about leaving. Okay? 
how everybody wants to sit forever and ever and talk about how awful their boss it is. You know, like, some people are like over it. And especially in this day and age where things are happening elsewhere in the world, you want to live. You know, you want to suck every single second out of every single night. So Fridays and Saturdays, you better know what's going on in your neighborhood. You better know what's hot, you better, and you better know what clubs are open and how late, and you better start taking down a telephone number so that you can make that phone call and start making those connections for people and start building your reputation as that, you know, be-all and end-all concierge here in Williamsburg. The only person that people want to dine with, you know? So start building your network, start building your party, start building your outside connections for a better life and education for your kids. All right, any questions? Any thoughts? Give me some feedback. Well, I'll bring <laughs> How does everyone feel? How does everyone feel about the restaurant business? That we had it all like in our hands and we, <laughs> we didn't explore it that oh, much. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's easy. It's not, it's not difficult. It's just get used to it and just you know, express yourself more. Now, I was thinking when we were doing the um, the work, when we were actually putting in practice, what you were like, you know, telling us, um, you can feel the click between the uh, clients, the customers, and the staff. It's like we're working, you know, really, some, you know, really. Like as a team, yeah, and, and you can feel it. Yeah. Like everything really smoothly, everything is like going better. Everything actually is going faster. They don't even care about the time. It's like they for kind of like forget that in a in a restaurant, and they like more feeling the customer that they're in a place like you know five star base that they're taking care of them. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> that that's how we felt, right? And we started, yeah. you know, we practice it. This is so awesome. And isn't that a better feeling than I'm working for somebody? Yeah. And part of the reason why I didn't pick up um, your composition books is I wanted to see who, who bought them and started them, but also who made sure that the new people also bought them. But since I, I just kind of assumed that there would be newer people here that didn't make the last meeting. So it's kind of a moot point, but, but the, the, the exercise that I was really looking to do was to see how many people took this conversation that we had last time and made sure that their team members were on the same, on the same level or on, you know, up to speed. Because that's as important as working together as a team with your client and with your boss and with your kitchen. It's as important to be part of a team with your team members. You know, like there's always going to be somebody who sucks at selling or sucks at side work. You know, that's part of a cool house is that it kind of all averages out. But cool is cool no matter what. You're all on the same team no matter what. So a couple of things that that customers won't tell you, and but you'll never see them again, are things like. Um, like a, a, a piece of paper on the floor that people constantly walk over. And if you've got a manager who's, you know, putting out fire in another place, you know, you, you're saying, I don't care about the, where I work. I don't really care about, you know, I'm not that concerned about my environment. And I really want to be micromanaged. Because once Ivan comes back out and sees the piece of paper, he's going to say, what, nobody saw the piece of paper? You know? And you're saying, I really want to be micromanaged. If you are really a team, then the new people would show up with these because you would have said, you know, what you really have to do is, is you know, get this and this is how you should use it. And you'll start building, because your money is my money, so if we're all pooling, the faster we get you up to speed, the faster I start making money too. Right? So some of the things that will turn um, customers off that may not have been discussed ever are things like nail polish color. Did you ever talk about that? 
Okay. Nail polish color, having your hair down like this. You know, if you're, if you're touching food, having your hair down, having colorful nails, um, lots of jewelry. No customer will ever say anything to you or write about it. Like, how am I going to write, um, food was delicious, but, you know, striped, striped nails? Like, no one's ever going to write that, but they will never come back. And the reason why, and you may not know this, because when, what's the big buzzword now is branding, right? Yes. We're all branding ourselves. So, Camille, when you get into the visual arts sector, you're going to brand yourself. What does visual arts mean to you as a career? Like, what, what does that look like for you? Mm, for me, it's like a, um, an opportunity to spread myself. Like, but what would you be doing? What, what job?